Courtney, don't eat anything! Thing, thing, thing. Rich, is that lightning frozen? Rich, what's going on? Why isn't anyone moving? Why does my voice sound like that? Rich, honey. That's how it started for me. The second lightning struck and everything froze. I couldn't hear anything. The crowd at the baseball game became mute masses of still ants. And the sounds at the game never returned. And it felt like being inside one of those soundproof rooms. You can't hear anything but your body. Eventually you start thinking you can hear your own thoughts. Right away, I thought about why Rich was being so weird. Honey, honey, I love you. I love you so much. Why was he so frantic yet happy? Nervous and stressed yet thankful? That's unusual for him because he's normally as relaxed and collected as they come. That's one of the things I love about him. It was the hardest thing in the world to walk away from him and the boys. The boys? Oh, the boys. Yes, I have three boys. They were each frozen in time, too. Max was elated from the pop fly and still jumping with excitement. Will was trying to stand up between Rich and I because he wanted to jump, too. Charlie... He was the strangest introduction to this whole thing. He had stood on his weak legs from my kneecaps. He was stretching out his little arms and hands to the sky, probably trying to touch the pretty colors. I was holding him with my hands around his mid-body under his arms when the flash hit. I pulled back, but Charlie didn't move. His clothes moved, but he didn't move. I slowly removed one hand and he didn't wobble. I removed my other hand that I thought was stabilizing him for just a second and brought it back. He was the same as the baseball crowd. Same as Max and Will. Same as Rich. Eventually, I even removed my knees from under his tiny feet and he just floated immovable there, frozen in time. Frozen in time? I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't see what you said. Poor soldier. His lungs are outside the barrier, but his head, hands, and forearms are inside. I can see his lips moving, but he's not getting any air to operate his voice box. How he's even still alive shouldn't be possible, yet here he is. Can you repeat it again so I can read your lips? I'm sorry this has happened to you, but it's nice to have someone to talk to for a while. I've been stuck in here for a long time like this. I'm so sorry this is happening to you. You were just doing your job. You didn't ask for any of this. I guess me being deaf in one ear and learning to read lips has a plus side. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to tell what you're trying to say. What's your name? I'm Corporal Darren Thames. I was driving the front car of the motorcade you probably see behind me. We crashed into the barrier not knowing it was there at 50 miles an hour. I flew through the windshield which broke my helmet but somehow saved my skull. My mind was moving so fast that everything felt like it was in slow motion still feels that way. I can't move my head at all. Only my eyes, so my peripheral vision is the extent of what I can see. Can you still see my crashed Humvee behind me? The front end that is inside some of the barrier I can. The rest of the vehicle is gone, though. Oh, I see. They must have removed it. I suppose there really isn't a reason to keep it there. I suppose not. Um, p please say that again. I couldn't read your lips that time. I said, is my body still there? It is, but it's just dangling. No motion. You're... you're... you're in good shape. Now I know why your husband loves you back. 
You're a good liar. No, I'm serious. You do have a really good build. Well, thank you, I suppose. Never did have much luck with blondes. I doubt that. A young, handsome guy like you probably had to hold a lady's back with a barricade. I'm glad you've kept your sense of humor, Courtney. You said your husband was acting strange? What did you mean? Well, he was acting like he hadn't seen me in who knows how long. He grabbed and kissed me, telling me he loved me, overrun with emotions. He took in a deep breath to tell me more, but then suddenly got scared again. Then he yelled out, don't eat anything. He was trapped in here that first month too, him and four others. Four others? Yeah, why? There were three male bodies that were frozen in time near us on the grass. I hadn't seen them before. It was like they appeared out of nowhere. They were all dead. I didn't see a fourth. She may not have went with him at the end. Maybe she tried to go another way. Considering the three men are dead, the chances are she might be too. What did they die of? I'm not sure. The big guy was just lying there with his eyes open. I just assumed he was dead, but I guess he could be alive, maybe. Next to him was uh, what you could describe as a pile of flesh. I know it was a person because there were clothes mixed in with the parts. Ugh. Then there was a homeless guy. He looked pretty dirty. He had a bunch of fresh cuts and bruises, but that's not what killed him. What killed him? It looked like a gunshot wound to his head. Did you see a gun lying near him anywhere? Mm, no. No, I didn't. Hmm, I see. Man, it's a miracle Rich survived it all. I know. I, I can't imagine what he went through. I, I'm, I'm sorry. What, what you're going through. It's all right. I'm glad he survived too. If he made it, then maybe, if we're smart, you can make it too. He really helped you out with that no eating anything warning. We can all make it. You included. Not just us. Wait a minute. If Rich unfroze from the time lock, why didn't you? Your guess is as good as mine. Nothing about any of this makes sense with what I know about the rules of physics. Where were you guys when Rich was acting weird? We were next to the night stadium, just over there on the other side of the Elements apartment building. Hmm, I don't know. Sound travels at 344 meters per second, so I should have been affected the same as him. Maybe the buildings caused the effects to somehow delay. Possibly the second strike didn't come too fast, so the barrier didn't come down in this part of the city? Maybe. I, I don't know. All of this is over my head. Why are you smiling? <laughs> what? You're gonna have to stop laughing long enough to move your lips so I can read them, Darren. When you said it was over your head, I was about to say not over mine. Okay. <laughs> it's not over my head. Think about it. I'm suspended ten feet above ground, frozen in time with only my head working. It's not over my head. <laughs> That's t terrible. It really wasn't funny. But poor Darren needed something to lighten the mood. How he hasn't gone insane after four months in this place alone is amazing. He was alone a month when Rich was here, and then another three before I found him. I think I saw him the very first day, but of course I avoided him because who goes to a suspended in mid-air dead body? After three months of no sleep, eating, or anything else but walking and thinking, I was about to go crazy myself. Boredom made me approach to try and figure out what happened. It was just something to do. 
That's when I noticed his facial expressions. His eyebrows raised and lowered, his eyes widened and then squinted. His mouth was moving although no sound was coming out. Even now I still have to imagine what his voice actually sounds like. I couldn't hug him because of the barrier, although I wanted to. I think had he been able to cry, he would have. First thing we did was talk for days, because it was just that nice to be around someone again. Then after that, we started trying to figure out our new normal. When you go back to where your husband and the kids are today, take a closer look at the bodies on the ground. Okay, what am I looking for? Something that gives away when they froze again. Check wristwatches, cell phones, even look at the Knights game display. Maybe we can get an idea of this time freeze. Maybe there's a difference from there to here. Okay, okay, I will. But will you be okay here? I'll be fine, thanks. I'll see you when you get back. It didn't feel right, but what other choice did I have? I had to leave him there. It didn't take long to get back to Rich and the kids. I had walked it so many times I could find it in my sleep if I had to. Not that I could sleep if I wanted to. I didn't even feel tired. I felt the same that I did the very first day of all this. If I wasn't having such a wonderful day with my family, I think I probably would have went crazy a couple weeks in. I can't imagine how Rich endured this. Darren and I at least know that it will come to an end, but that's because of Rich's warning and Darren seeing their group. It will come to an end. If I just handle this smart, maybe Rich, the kids, and I can survive. I don't know how to tell Darren that there's no way he'll make it. He's just like his Humvee with its front end in the barrier, but the rest is gone. His body was dead weeks ago. The doctors came and removed his body at the neck outside the barrier. They did it so quickly, it was like when a doctor cuts an umbilical cord. I talked to him the entire time, hoping to distract him, but he had no idea. He never felt a thing. All that's left is his active mind in here. As soon as the barrier falls, he will die. <sighs> He's dead already, but his brain hasn't caught up to that truth yet. And I can't tell him. I shouldn't. It's too much to bear. At least this way, he can have hope until he just falls asleep. God forgive me, I can't tell him. Okay, I'm back here at the stadium with Rich and the kids, and these three bodies. Henry, Jones, and Aaron. Oh, this is gross. I can't even tell who this person was. It's just a mound of body parts. Oh. Oh. Okay, I, I don't see a watch on him. I'm not gonna look at that anymore, okay. Okay, what about this guy? He looks like some sort of professor. His eyes are open. I wonder if he's still alive. He has a digital watch. It says 3.33 PM. I don't need all this other stuff, year, month stuff, okay? 3.33, that's a good synchronic time. Easy to remember. All right, what about you? I doubt you have a watch. You look homeless. No watch. Mm. No watch, but you do have a number of cell phones. Can't say I blame you, buddy. Walking for a month amongst frozen people in time. You gotta keep yourself busy somehow. Hmm. 3.33. All right, 
333, 333, and 333. All right, Darren, let's make a bet. The clock in the baseball field will be 3.33 as well. Hmm. 3.32. I guess I lost. Game board clock must be slow. Must have been right when the minutes changed over. <sighs> well, this doesn't matter anyway. None of this changes anything. I want out of here! <sighs> Rich, my love. I hope we can make it out of here in one piece. What is happening? Why, why is this happening? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand. Why is this happening? What does your watch say, sweetheart? Okay, yeah. 3.33, that's what I thought. Three thirty three. What? Three thirty three. That's what all the times were. The homeless guy had a bunch of cell phones he was stealing, and they all said three thirty three as well. Did you find any others? Yeah. The bearded big guy said three thirty three, and so did Riches. All three thirty three. Did you check the stadium billboard clock? Yeah, it said 3.32, but it must have been when the minute was changing over. Look at my watch on my left wrist. Why? Just look. Okay. 3.31? Exactly. I don't understand. I've been staring at this watch for four months now. It has always said 3.31.01 seconds. Even when the lightning went back up into the sky and time slowly moved like normal again for just a couple minutes, I watched everything, excited by the hope that it could be returned to normal, but nothing moved over here. I saw a hummingbird flap its wings for a few seconds, but that was it in the entire few minutes. You just told me that every watch on the other side of the barrier showed an extra two minutes, almost a three minute differential. Don't you see what this means? You, Rich, and the kids have a chance to get out. We do? Oh my god, we do! <laughs> oh, but wait, wait, wait. What, what, what about the ballpark billboard? It said 332. What does that mean? You could be right. The clock could just be off. Did anyone have over there a watch like mine? One that showed the seconds too? Yes, the, the bearded guy did. Mm, but I wasn't paying attention to it. Think, try and remember. You can always go back and check again. We've got plenty of time. No, no, I, I can remember. It said, um, it, it said 14. Y yes, 14. It said 33314. That proves it. Time is slower on this side of the city. You guys can make it out. We can make it out, Darren. We can. Courtney. It's okay. Of course it's okay, because we're all going to get out of here together. No, we're not. My body's gone, isn't it? All that's left are my forearms, hands, and my head that are inside the barrier. Isn't that right? Um, Darren, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't want to tell you. I wanted you to have some hope while we had time, right up until the end. I... I I didn't want you to be stressed out for another seven months. And now that you're saying the bear may not come down over here, I just wanted to keep your hopes up. I, I don't want you stuck in here forever, Darren. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I've got an idea. A chance. Like 
but... We don't need to worry about that right now. We can talk about it another time. As for you and me, we get to enjoy each other's company for seven more months. Aren't we the lucky ones? Yeah, aren't we the lucky ones? Darren was the strongest man I knew after Rich. To control himself the way he did was just amazing. The next seven months went by quicker after that. Darren taught me a lot of things in that time. He taught me how to play chess. I found a game board and set it up in front of him. I got really good too. I even made him mad a couple of times because he kept losing. I didn't want him upset, but for those brief seconds, he forgot about everything, which was the only gift I could actually give him. So Darren had me run drills so I would know what to do for every possible eventuality. Well, at least those we could guess. We didn't have any working timers or watches, so I'd run to the barrier each day while Darren counted each second until I got back. It was like a way for us to both stay busy and useful every day. And it helped me feel like we had a chance. Once in a while, he'd catch me looking at him with a certain look of pity. Anytime he caught me, he'd say, We prepare for what we can, we deal with what we can't. And that would reset me just enough. Like I said, he was tough. He noticed what he believed to be a shockwave in his peripheral vision at the end of the first strike. He didn't know where it came from since there was no explosion. So he guessed maybe it was all the sound catching back up to the present. That would explain the impossibly loud noises he heard the first time the lightning disappeared. If you guys run out of the barrier too soon, you'll get caught in the shockwave. So we have to wait? Why wouldn't everyone inside get destroyed too? Nothing inside was even bothered before. It may be like the eye of a storm. Everything inside is safe, but outside is a demolition zone. Okay, okay. We, we, we can't see the barrier, so what if we can't see the shockwave? You'll know. It will be a huge shockwave. Even if it's invisible, it will be kicking up so much dirt and dust, you can't miss it. I saw it all the way from this side of the barrier the last time. What, 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 what if the second lightning strikes before the shockwave runs? That's the only problem with this whole thing. We just have to hope that it doesn't happen. Prepare for what we can. Deal with what we can't. Exactly. One more month before the lightning is gone. Every day I get more and more nervous. But thankfully Darren keeps me on track. That phrase of his is very effective and I appreciate it so much. If he could have gotten out here, I would have loved to introduce him to my sister. I know she would have adored him. Today though, was the first day that I couldn't even stand to look at him. That was a good run. You feel ready? Yeah, I feel good. I'm ready. Good. I need you to do me a favor today. Anything. I need you to walk to the intersection of Trade and Tryon. There should be something left on the ground there or in the area around. Pick it up and bring it back here. All right, what am I looking for? Two things. A broken or shattered window is the first thing. And the second? When you see it, you'll know. Wait a second. That's six blocks away. How do you even know it's there? I'll let you know when you get back. Considering Darren's situation, he could pretty much tell me whatever he needed at different times. Sometimes he'd tell me, go take a walk, and I would. I figured he needed a break. Made sense. After all, we were always awake. 24 hours a day, we were awake for almost a year now. Today felt different though. There was something in his expression that said this was an unusual request. I didn't know what it was, but I couldn't shake that feeling that I really didn't want to know. I reached the intersection. 
I stood at the center of the four statues surrounding the square. They each stood for something that helped the city grow in its history. Commerce, industry, transportation, and the fourth statue represented the future. The future. I've been stuck in this moment for so long that even five minutes from now seems like a desperate, hopeful dream. There's a broken window. Hmm, how did he know that the window was broken? What is that? Is that a gun? It is. It's empty, so it's useless. This must be what Darren was talking about. I wonder why he wants this. I found it. So how do you know you found what I was talking about? Well, it occurred to me that soldiers are probably gun-happy morons, so it made sense. <laughs> I suppose we are. But how did you know it was there and that the window would be shattered? About a year ago, Rich and the other four were nearby. I could hear them talking. They were talking about Jones, the homeless man that was with them. The woman said that she didn't understand his obsession with trying to harm himself. Everyone, including Rich, agreed, of course, but then Rich said something interesting. He said, Still, it was an awfully big gamble to put the gun to his own head. He didn't know that the bullet wouldn't leave the chamber for sure. The bearded man reminded him that the window he fired shots at didn't even break, so it made sense in a weird way. But you knew the window was broken. H how did you know? When the sound explosion happened, I thought I heard the sound of breaking glass and all the ruckus. Then you said... It looked like a homeless man had been shot in the head, but no gun was lying around. Courtney, I need you to open my left hand. Why? You know why. Please open my hand. Well, okay, but I still don't know what I'm supposed to find. His hand had been locked into a fist for a year. It never moved. It was inside the barrier just after the elbow, so most of his forearm was visible, although they hadn't removed the rest. I ignored this strange sight, as I always did. I never wanted Darren to feel ashamed or gross to me. He saved my life every day with his company. Rich and him would have been fast friends. So I pried his hand open, finally, and saw what he was holding. A single bullet. What's this for? It's for my gun. My gun that flew out of my vehicle with me when I crashed. My gun that the homeless man Jones picked up just over there. The gun he took with him and dropped at Trade and Tryon after he tried to shoot himself in the head. You then picked up that gun, and now I have it. But you just said it was useless. You said that when you found Jones, he looked to have fresh wounds all over his body including a fresh head wound from a firearm? No, no. I am not doing this, Darren. Courtney? I'm not doing this, Darren. If you don't, I'll be in here forever, but you'll be gone. How do you think that's going to go for me? What do you think that would be like? What if the next strike is even longer? What if I can never get out? But I don't want you to die. I wanted you to get out of here. I know, but we both know that's just wishful thinking. The best thing for me is to fall asleep. Really sleep. That's the best gift you could give me before you go, Courtney. I can't! You have to. You're my last chance. No, I can't! After that, I walked away. What else could I do but walk away? My best friend just asked me to kill him. I didn't even want to think about it. What else could I do but walk away? Because I, I knew he was right. I knew in 30 days I had to kill him. It was the least I could do, even though it was the last thing I wanted to do. Those last days went by horribly fast. It was the first time in this terrible barrier I wished it could have slowed down. Of course it had to stay terrible, right to the end. Have you got everything? 
I do. Everything's in my duffel bag. Now remember, when you get to the barrier edge, what will you do? I know. We stop at the edge. I throw the bag and wait for the shockwave to hit it. That way I know the worst of it is over and we can run. Hopefully, we'll make it. You will make it. I know it. After that, he just looked at me. He didn't ask me again. Even now, he's still thinking of me and how I feel. I can't do it. I just started to walk away. I kept walking. I refused to look at him because I didn't want to see him saying anything. It didn't matter for two reasons, though. One, he wasn't going to ask me again anyway. And two, I could hear him pleading in my mind with each step. So I turned around and I marched right back up to him. I looked him in the eye and refused to cry although tears welled up in my eyes. I took the bullet from my bag and then the gun. I loaded the chamber and without hesitation got it over as soon as I could. I put the gun up to my friend's forehead and pulled the trigger. Nothing happened as we both knew nothing would. Yet. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. I'm sorry we couldn't get you out. I got to do what I wanted and that was to help someone. Get out of here and I'll have everything I've ever wanted. I will. I place my cheek against his before kissing it one last time. My eyes tell him I will always remember him. And I try to stay strong, but I just can't. He notices and he just says, We prepare for what we can. We deal with what we can. G goodbye, soldier. Goodbye, Courtney. And thank you. I couldn't stand to just walk away after that. So I ran. I ran as hard as I could so he couldn't see me. Because as soon as I was out of sight, I collapsed, bawling for what felt like hours. Thankfully, he couldn't hear me. It's almost time. I've been with Rich and the kids for almost a day now, trying to prepare myself. The lightning will soon be gone. My hands are under Charlie, ready to grab him and Will. As soon as I can, I'll start running. I'll yell to Rich to grab Max. I hope he understands and follows fast. Lastly, I hope the lightning will delay. I hope the shockwave moves quickly. I hope we all can make it out alive. I hope. Rich, grab Max and run! I've got him! Keep going! I can see it! I can see the edge! There's a portable speaker there! Keep running! Don't look back! Stop, 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 stop! Stop! What? Why are you stopping, Courtney? We have to wait for the shockwave! What shockwave? Run, run, run! I'm right behind you! We're gonna make it! We're gonna make it! We're gonna make it! I see the flash! No! Oh my god. He's freaking out. Courtney? Courtney! Courtney! It's okay, it's okay, huh? It's okay. We made it. We barely made it, but... We made it. Congratulations, Mrs. Getke. Your survival is truly remarkable. Your husband and I were discussing what happened. How did you know what to do? A soldier named Darren Thames was stuck in the barrier at Stonewall and Tryon. We were together the whole year. He helped me know what to do. Corporate Timms took his body down months ago. How could she have helped you? His body was dead. 
but inside the barrier, he was still alive. He was still thinking for the whole year. Mind God, we had no idea. W were you able to confirm? Is, is, is Darren dead now? Yeah. His head remained in place and it looked like he was going to once again be stuck in the time vault. But just before the last strikes hit, something killed him. He is dead. He kept me alive, Rich, so we could be a family again. I understand, sweetheart. I had friends who did the same. Did anyone else make it out? Anybody? I think you two may want to see this. Please, follow me. Rich, where's your shoe? <laughs> like I said, hon, we barely made it. My shoe got caught in the barrier. Thankfully, I kept going without it. We really were fortunate, weren't we? You have no idea. My god. There's multiple strikes inside the bubble. That is correct. How... How, how many years until this one is over? With the rules of physics no longer being set in stone, we cannot be sure. By our best guesses, it will be 200 years. You five are the only ones to survive. The lightning strikes.